OFM, the voice of Oranyamu. Our podcast today is um, the psychological cost of COVID-19 is um, Christy that will actually be joining us right here on 921.0. Please make sure that you guys do stay tuned and that you guys do enjoy the time here with me. Mr. Christy, how are you doing today? Uh, good afternoon. I'm great, thank you. How are you? I am doing a great, Mr. Christy. Um, can you just a short introduction once again to those that um, do not know who you are? Yes, my name is Christy Kilner. I uh, am the owner of a local research company uh, called Survey Warehouse, and I am also the national investigator for a Africa-wide project called the Afrobarometer. Well, Mr. Christy, um, the psychological cost of COVID-19 is the question, is the is the um, podcast for today. My question to you is, um, listening from the podcast, do you think that Namibia has a, has, has an economic recovery chance? Uh, yeah, let's, let's quickly just run over some of the issues in, uh, that I raised in the column. Uh, and how they may relate to the economics uh, or the future prospects for economic recovery. One of the things okay. that we see uh, in the number of surveys now that we've done on COVID-19 is that Namibians are generally quite anxious about the fallout from uh, this pandemic. And that fallout could be divided in broadly two aspects of their lives. One is the health aspects. People are generally scared that they will get sick. They or someone in their households or a family member or a friend will get sick. And then, of course, there's also the fear of death that comes with it. Yeah. The second element of anxiety is that of the economic consequences. So Namibians are generally concerned about their household incomes, which have taken a huge hit. Um, people have lost jobs. They've got their wages cut. Uh, people are generally concerned about the economics uh, or the economic uh, situation in the country. Uh, people are generally concerned about uh, their children's future. Yeah. You know, these are all sorts of things that pretty much depend on on our economic situation, which uh, has been negatively affected by the pandemic. And in the column, I raise a number of physical symptoms. Uh, which comes from a standard anxiety scale that is used internationally to measure the extent to which people uh, are under stress or uh, experience anxiety due to specific circumstances. Yes. And, uh, there's a number of physical characteristics, amongst others. You know, uh, how's your sleeping pattern? Uh, are you losing sleep regularly? Are, have you got heart palpitations when you think about this topic? Uh, and all those. Uh, so we could tell from the physical symptoms that Namibians are under severe stress. Uh, and as I said, they're under stress and anxiety because of the fallout, the fear of getting sick and perhaps dying, and then the economic consequences of uh, uh, this pandemic. Yeah. So if we if we talk about an economic recovery, we, we start moving into... Uh, a debate on uh, what is needed for the economy to recover. Now, we know that the Namibian economy has been under pressure for years before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think right now the, the future doesn't look bright for people. Because mm -hmm. um, there, there's a, uh, if you look at the, the recent reports, uh, statistics on new infections and death rates, you'll see that they have shot up over the last week or so, uh, yes. even a month, suggesting on one hand that we're entering a third wave of the pandemic, mm -hmm. which is the winter wave. We had it last year, too. Um, so that is, is, is uh, we're facing that. And then, you know, more people are currently dying than did in the past. So that uh, increases, I think, or will have a great increase on people's anxiety and stress levels. Yeah. With regards... Um, 
Okay, continue. Sorry, just, just on the economic recovery. Under these circumstances, of course, it is really difficult to have a recovery. However, uh, the one element of this pandemic that people argue will be very closely tied to our economic recovery is the vaccine. Yeah. If there's not a great uptake of the vaccine and Namibians' economic recovery is very back of last year, June, the um, Mr. Christian, get a feeling for what comes, what lies ahead for us this winter. Okay. It's the one thing, it will be a repeat. The difference will be that we start from a higher base than what we did last year. Yeah. So our current infections is already at the peak of last year, and we're very far away from this wave's peak. With, re- with regards to the report of um, stress and anxiety in Namibia that was at the peak of the pandemic, were there more studies that were, that were conducted in 2021? Well, we've just completed uh, a study. We've launched the results um, yesterday. Uh, it's a, it's a, a study that was done during uh, December and uh, February this year, December last year and February this year. Yeah. And uh, we basically see that the stress and anxiety levels, and we haven't used the same scale, this time we just ask people what they what they worry about, and I can give you uh, a few details on those. Um, but basically, uh, you know, ninety four percent of Namibians believe that their children's future would be negatively affected. Ninety four percent felt the country's economic conditions will be negatively affected. Yes. Ninety two percent felt their household's economic situation will be negatively affected, and eighty six percent said somebody in the household they scared may get um, uh, may contract COVID nineteen. So the stress level is, is by no means uh, lower this year than they were last year. I think it's a combination. Um, it will get more serious. It's compounded. Um, and the longer the economic recovery doesn't take place, the worse it will be. Um, so I think, you know, there seems to be uh, an issue. Mm. And that issue is that even if people are generally worried about the impact of the pandemic, they are reluctant to go for vaccination. Yeah. Were there any with re, with were were there any reports um conducted regarding abuse during the pandemic? Uh, no, I have not looked at any gender-based violence studies uh, or statistics. I I don't think there was any specific study done on it. Yeah. Uh, generally, the the worldwide tendency is for gender-based violence to go up. Um, I know at some point the police released statistics saying that it was actually down a little bit. Um, we have included in the new survey that we launched um, some questions where people thought, you know, what was their experience? Did they think that things like the abuse of alcohol and um, uh, interpersonal violence went up or down? And in both cases, people reported that it was down. Uh, but uh, again, I, there was, I, I don't know the study that has been done, and yes. I really can't remember what the statistics said uh, from the police. Just on um, that note, is there any more information that you would like uh, to add on to our interview for today? Well, I think, you know, uh, of course, when people are under this kind of anxiety and when this level of stress uh, becomes prevalent in the society, it also means that you're going to have serious health problems, mental health issues developing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we need to be very vigilant uh, about this uh, as a community, as a society, as a household, as a family. Uh, we, need, we, we, we really need to be vigilant for people who are um, developing serious consequences as a result of prolonged anxiety and stress caused by COVID. Yeah. Well, Mr. Christie, I'd like to thank you so much for joining me on 91.0. You're very welcome. Thank you for uh, having me here. I really appreciate it. 
It's always a pleasure. Oh, it's always a pleasure speaking to you some way, somehow, any <laughs> other day, just to hear some fact checks of what's going on in, during the pandemic. Excellent. Uh, well, keep well and keep safe. Um, please do uh, keep safe, Mr. Chrissy. Thank you so much for joining in. Keep well. Bye-bye. Bye. That was Mr. Christie. We're talking about the psychological cost of COVID-19. Um, I hope you guys will stay tuned to the rest of the open program right here on 91.0, the voice of arrangement. Stay fresh with OFM 91.0, the voice of Orangemun.